Greetings. This is the Open Pacific at Pisco on the coast of Peru. The nearest landmass is Easter Island, which is more than 2,000 miles off in that direction. Now, I know a lot of you have heard and probably believe that there was one very advanced ancient civilization located in different parts of the world responsible for the construction of the megalithic works that we see but honestly I believe that there were at least four or five because the approach and construction techniques are not the same. For example in Egypt almost everything is linear with flat surfaces. Take the Great Pyramid, for example, but then also the giant boxes of the Serapium. I'm talking, of course, about the pre-dynastic works. But then when we get to Peru, almost everything is polygonal, as in each stone is a different shape and size and multifaceted and much more organic looking. So with the Egyptian stuff, it's very logical and left-brained, whereas in Peru, it's much more right-brained and almost playful. And Puma Punku in Bolivia is a different style, almost perfectly flat surfaces. The scale of the construction is not as big as in Peru and Egypt. And it seems to have been done by a very distinct culture that only created Puma Punku and Tiwanaku. And also when we go to Easter Island, you see two different styles of the so-called uh, so called Moai figures. Those are, the, of course, the heads. You have a smaller style in the region of six to eight feet tall, generally with flat noses. So not really that big. And then you have much, much bigger ones with more of what's called an aquiline nose. And so the... Um, Hello. Goodbye. Hello. Okay, gracias. And so the, the bigger ones, the largest one actually would have been, if it had been completed, about 200 tons. It's still in the quarry, mysteriously never finished. and. Again, the sense of scale. It's, it's quite clear that when the Polynesians arrived on Easter Island, they found the giant figures there made by a mysterious culture. Now, in that case, we see artistic depictions, as in human facial features, whereas in pre-dynastic Egypt and also in the highlands of Peru, it's more simply functional. You have walls and things like that. Now, I do also think that Petra in Jordan is much, much older than what most academics believe. And the style we see there is very similar to the pre-dynastic work. You have very flat surfaces and then basically this, this bullnose-shaped feature. Uh, Petra is seven miles long. It's not just the treasury that most people are acquainted with. And so I think there's quite a strong possibility that the pre-dynastic works of Egypt and also some of the work at Petra and maybe Baalbek in Jordan and sites in Saudi Arabia were done by the same culture. Uh, as far as Southeast Asia, I've heard that places like Angkor Wat have megalithic features that predate the, the work that we commonly think about. So rather than there being one ancient civilization, 12,000 plus years old, that was located all around the globe uh, and were in communication with one another. I think we're looking at different civilizations at different periods of time. How old? Some people speculate 50,000 years, 100,000 years. All I can say is prior to what's called the Younger Dryas. So older than 12,800 years old. 
Uh, those are simply my thoughts on the issue. Not one civilization, but many. Were they in contact with each other? Who knows? Were they contemporary with each other? Who knows? So this is Brian Forster on the coast of Peru at Pisco. Thank you for watching.